Arr, victory sandwich. All right. We have victory over many things on the motorized bike today. And to celebrate, I have made myself a victory sandwich. I like to get on film before it disappears. But I am satisfied. I worked hard today. I'm still waiting for my 60 and 65 uh, points. I have point 60 and point 65 millimeter carburetor jet to come. But there's some awesome improvements on this bike. So first of all, I replaced the broken um, rear rack because, well, it broke right here. No, there we go. I'm finally going to finish it off there. You can see the front part's busted. See, it broke up. I might be able to fix it with some JB Weld or something. I don't know. But maybe a shaft in there. But anyway, um, I made some major improvements. So, we're going to be going over that. First, I gotta eat the sandwich. So to begin with, we're going to talk about the front part here with the handlebar accessory bar sticking out. That's what I call it anyway. Or maybe somebody calls it handlebar extender. I don't know. This thing does not work right. It doesn't give me the right um, MPG or mileage or anything. It says I've went 10.08 miles, which is completely wrong. Um, it does keep track of the time though. And if I get pulled over by a cop for some reason, it makes the bike legal because it's got a speedometer and odometer. At least as far as I know. But, anyway, this thing was flopping all around with the headlight here and all this. It was just flopping all over the place, making me mad. And I tried using Loctite, because that's what I had. It didn't work. Loctite, Loctite thread locker, it actually acted like an, a lubricant, because it doesn't like rubber and stuff. Stupid idea. So, I used the Loctite super glue, and now it's stuck there. I've had multiple layers of rubber in here. I used the rubber that came with the rear rack uh, up here because I got two kits, two things. So I thought, well, why not? You know, I might as well just use it. It's very nice to have those rubber shims. But anyways, I put up there, I put the glue in between each shim, glued it to the rail, and now it's it's pretty solid. I, I think you can still move it, but it's very solid. Um, I got the battery pack down here for the headlight. Headlight's up here. And when it's plugged in, the light turns on here, letting you know you can turn it on. Anyway... It's charging right now over there. I'd be showing you all this outside, but the weather's not good today. Okay, let's take this light to the back and show you what's really cool. Okay, so normally with the rear racks, when you put them on in the kit, you only get one of these bars. I don't know if you can see them very well, but there's a bar right here going down to the, the frame right there to support this. And the bolt that they give you to put this on that goes through here is too short to put two of them on, but these bolts are not. And I got more of these bolts and, and assemblies with the new one, so I just took one of these, put it in here, and I double nutted it, because on the other side it actually stripped out, so I double nutted both sides just to be safe. I could, well, I don't know if my lock nuts would fit. I don't think they would on that. But anyway, um, I'll loosen these, tighten them up, you know, once everything's where it should be. Got my bike lock here. The reason the bolts are sticking out is so they don't dig into the seat. And clearly this one is not broken here, which is nice. It's just don't lift on this when you're trying to start the motor or whatever and be fine. Okay, so because we've got two of these now, that means twice as much um, down pressure on this and twice as much stability going back and forth too, side to side. So that's all good news, I think. And then I've also got three nuts in here, or bolts in here, whereas before the middle one didn't have a bolt on. Now they've all three do. I've got these guys for panniers, and right now the zip tie is what's keeping this uh, fender from moving all around. It kind of still moves a little bit, but that's okay. And then this thing keeps the zip tie from moving this 
guy here, I can't really attach it up here. Because this is round, and I, I don't know, I'd have to drill something if I was going to do that. But anyway, um, so yeah, nice seat back here. And um, I did double nut it on there because, let's see if you can see down in here, there's two nuts on that. And I put the lock nut, because I bought these lock nuts from Napa because everything was 6 millimeter, 10 millimeter outer of the nut, but 6 millimeter inner and on the engine. And this thing is the same with the seat, so I just decided to do that. I think these might be too. I mean, I know the nuts are 10 millimeter, that's for sure, but, um, but I don't know what the inner diameter is on those. But anyways, I did that, so this thing isn't coming off here. So if I want to take uh, this back part and the wiring here and change it, what I'd have to do is take um, everything off the side and maybe take this, well, to get the seat off would be the hardest part, I think, because it's double nutted. But, and it's because I think it's secured inside with, like, plastic or something. So I don't even know if it'll come off, if those double those uh, lock nuts and stuff are going to come off now. No idea. But anyways, it's on there, and my rider is going to stay on there. It's not going to fly off, so that's all good news. This is more secure than it's been before. These brackets that are just zip tied on here. Um, the zip ties there. So, anyway, um, didn't have to use new rubber uh, shims for any of this back stuff. So, I just used them on the front there with the handlebars. Um, I got this guy on here to keep the mud because you see the mud comes off the tire. Try to keep it out of the air filter. I want to get a longer air filter. That'd be cool. Once we prove that this works. And... The elevation in the LC Valley area is supposed to be 700 feet above sea level, and here where I'm at, it's supposed to be 1,200. So, according to what I'm hearing from other people and what they're using, I think I'm going to be using a 0 .65 millimeter jet in there. Um, we got the high performance head on because I thought that would help with the uh, too rich environment issue, but it didn't. I don't think. Um, so anyway, and this spring tensioner is great for break-in, but at this point it does kind of get in the way. And so once I'm able to get the, uh, the half chain link off and the spring tensioner thing off, that might be good. Um, I don't know. We'll see going down the road. But it definitely is great for break-in and stuff to help keep that chain tight all times. Um, you know, in case something else slips or whatever. Um, what else should we go over here? The gas tank. Yes, the gas tank. So... In my pictures and stuff, the gas tank looks great, but here we got a scratch, there's a scratch, and I don't know how that happened or when I did it or who, how, who did it, but that happened. I've not painted this tank. It's still all stock. It's got some uh, discoloration from gas getting spilt on it, stuff like that, uh, which some people do that on purpose. They think that looks cool. Um, but anyway, and I think the reason the speedometer odometer thing up here, which is one I got for free to review... Uh, I think the reason it's not working right is because of the distance between the forks and the wheel. I'll show you what I mean. So, all these come with a magnet. And you need to use the magnet that comes with them because the magnets have different strengths. And uh, Anyway, so there's the magnet there. It goes past this guy. But this guy, this remote 12 volt power whatever uh, sensor thing... It is supposed to be faced in toward the wheel, not faced forward like it is. But that's as close as I can turn it in without it hitting the magnet. And the magnet um, has to go right there. If I could move the magnet up here somehow and move this whole thing up, then that'd be great. But it's designed to go on like that down there. Um, it is a stronger magnet. I had that other one with the cord on it and all that that I tried. The eBay it was like 7 bucks, And... Um, it um, doesn't work with this because it just EMF or whatever resets the thing, which it does with a lot of other cheap ones. And so the magnet here uh, that came with the other one, the other magnet that was here, did not work as well with this as this one does. But it still doesn't work. I mean, anytime when I'm going really slow, it seems like it kind of picks up. But when I go faster, it's like it's showing slower speeds, like 2 or 5 miles an hour or something like that. So... Um, you know, when I get this thing upgraded, I've got a speedometer thing, GPS speedometer that I could put on the bike somewhere. Um, but I can't do that until I get a basket on the front of the bike. Because i got to power it with like USB power and stuff. And then also it's where my 12-volt battery is going to go and other electronics that I'm going to need. Because I'm going to be putting um, motorcycle headlights on the thing. 
and signal lights and the rear tail light all that and yes the motor the engine only puts out one and a half amps of power max when i get that all wired up and so um the thing is is that uh with putting out one and a half amps you got to be really careful about how much you draw on your battery and you definitely need a battery but some people they do it and they draw more power than the engine puts out and you can do that but it's not a good idea so i got the led headlights uh motorcycle headlights and if i use one of them they draw like half of 1.5 amps so that'd be like uh 0.75 amps or something and then you got the signal lights and then these the brake turn signal light thing that goes on the back that i've got it um it doesn't even register on my amp meter when it's pulling power so if i put that on that shouldn't be an issue it's just led and it's just a head headlight that's going to really draw power and i'm going to add accessories like a usb power uh 12 volt to you know usb power thing and put it up here somehow uh that'd be fine but see with the mountain bike one drawback that i don't like is you just don't have a lot of space up here to put stuff i mean let me put the light back up here but you see you've got from here well actually from here to here to mount stuff because you still got to have your speed controls and um you know i mean technically if i had the uh the um uh rear you know gear kit put on here what they call that the oh why can't i think of it it's a it's a kit that lets you put the engine on the regular bicycle chain instead of uh, on the sprocket jack shaft kit yeah and what happened is then I could get rid of this shifter because the front um, shifting wouldn't be happening so I could completely remove this and give me some more space this is where this control for signal lights and all that that's where the one for the motorcycle is going to be so because there's room there so I end up putting uh, the whole switch on there with the left and right turn headlight and it has a horn button and I think that's about it. Um, anyways, I put that there. A strange thing is, is the headlight switch on it shows high and low beam, but not an off position. So if I want to use it for headlight, um, I just have to figure out which is on and which is off, you know, and set it up that way instead of high beam and low beam. Um, but yeah, and that, that'd probably be a lot easier. It gives your thumb to change left and right instead of up here. Um, this thing. It makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? It's see now we got right signal, left signal. For some reason, both these LEDs come on. I don't know what's up with that. And like, if I touch it and bump it, it does different things because it's I don't know. It's it doesn't know what it's doing. But I got on left. We go back here. We got our left light, so that's all it's important. I mean, whoops, that was the wrong button. But right light. So you go right light and then I got the tail light thing going which um I, I, hey we got most of the lights on that's good um yeah I had some issues with this when I first got it but now it seems to be fixed bikeberry sent me a replacement for it because it was doing really weird stuff like it was staying on I couldn't get it to shut off and stuff um, I just haven't bothered replacing it yet, especially since I'm going to be upgrading to motorcycle, but it's a motorcycle parts, but you know, I could, uh, could definitely put this on another bike if I get another project to do, which would be great. And Bikeberry's coming out with, uh, with an EPA approved engine. And when they get that out, maybe I can build another, uh, bike. Um, and you know, if I do build another bike, it'd be fun to have like a bigger bike because you have more clearance down here which would be good yeah these 26 inch mountain bikes not so great for clearance down there um you know and from what i comprehend you can go larger than 26 inch uh wheels if you um either have the same number of uh of um what can i think of what you're called um or you can get the uh the adapter that goes in there the sprocket adapter that goes to the center hub and then you're then you're good to go but um your spokes that's what it called, spokes yeah if you have same number of spokes then uh, you could use the rag joint adapter thing but the other issue of course is that the diameter of those things where the sprocket goes on in there 
um, seem to be different. They don't seem to be the same all the time, which uh, causes you to have to sand things down and grind things to make them to fit, like you've seen in my other videos. But um, anyway, just thought I'd show you, um, give you a little update. And if you guys give me some money on Patreon, it'd really help me. I need black zip ties. I need lots of things. And Bikeberry keep, keeps coming out with new products to put on that I would love to try out. Um, they just came out with like a $100 uh, carburetor reed valve system that replaces the cylinder as well. And what happens with that is it's got like a whole new intake system on it, which hopefully I've got enough clearance for it to fit here. And uh, the reed valve in there has got six different reeds in it, which is pretty cool. And a much better uh, carburetor. The HP carb I think works great as long as you have the right stuff. And then this cable seems to get caught with this uh, automatic choke. So, because it automatically turns off when you hit the, the gas. That's why I call it automatic. But anyway, it's not really automatic. But this, if I had black zip tie, I could zip tie that up there and then it wouldn't get in there. I got to take it off anyway to change the jet and to adjust the low idle screw and all that because this thing has got a mean low idle. It just low idles like no tomorrow. And um, I decided to loosen up the cable as much as possible. And it still, um, I took the, the air filter off and the, the whole slide still moves all the way up and down. So there's no reason for me to, uh, to be concerned about that. Um, so I, and then the low idle looks like it's adjusted right visually. It looks like it's adjusted right, but um, anyway, I don't know. So hopefully, I'll get the parts soon because uh, Amazon that I'm not getting along with, which is where I had to get the jets. Because um, I, I thought Bikeberry had a jetting kit, but I, for some reason I can't find it on their website. Um, Amazon told me that it could show up like at the end of April, like April 30th or the beginning of uh, May. Even though I ordered it on the 10th of April. So I have no idea. I don't know if it's on the slow boat from China or where. But I checked out multiple sellers on Amazon. They all said they'd show up the same time. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But it said it already shipped out. Like on the 11th. It said it was already mailed out. So unless it's really coming on a slow boat from China. Um, I don't know. I think they made me pay. No, that was free shipping. That was free shipping, I think. I don't know. But it was like, I think, 7 bucks for 5 different jet sizes and the only ones I can really use on this uh, carburetor is the 60 and the 65. They also had another one that was just in the 60s but uh, it wasn't very reliable. You have 5 millimeter jets that go in these. You can check yours to make sure but um, the HP Carbs high performance um, and then they got that weird name Delato or Delato or whatever. They, um, they uh, use 5 millimeter jets so there's all your important information on that. Um, by the way, someone out there on Amazon land sent me another one of these to review. And I think it's a different brand. I can't tell because they look so, so similar. And so what I can do, if I can find a way to fit both battery packs on here, <laughs> is I could mount both of these on here, uh, maybe upside down or something, like on the sides of this front accessory rack, and go around at night and see how bright that is. I want to do a review video on that. But I can't really do much with this bike until I get my main jet so because uh, it's it's just making the top of the piston all black the spark plug fouled I mean it's still working but it was it was pretty nasty I had to clean it off um, so yeah I want to get the right jet size before I do any of that I've been greasing everything um, I think on this uh, other side over here you they show bikeberry like the uh, uh, maintenance for this thing um, to, uh, to to grease it all in here on this side of the engine. Should I have to move that light over somehow? I don't know. I'm not seeing anything in my camera. But, um... There. I think that's better. Um, but anyway... Uh, this clutch housing thing... Um, you don't want to put... I don't think you want to put a lot of grease in there. Most of the grease and stuff seems to have collected down here in the bottom. And I think... I think maybe the dust from the clutch things are there. Uh, Bikeberry started selling a, a ceramic clutch which I'd love to get those clutch pads. And um, so that's something I want to get as well. Uh, put those in there and get that going. And by the way, when you guys click the link for Bikeberry in the description of my videos and go shop there uh, using the links, 
I actually get paid for that. So that's great. Keep it up. I only get paid when I earn a hundred bucks. I have to get at least a hundred bucks. But um, but you know, it takes a while. But it, it does help. Also, Patreon and all that great stuff. So um, if you guys could help me out, that would be great because I want to keep doing these videos. I want to keep doing fun stuff and showing you guys things. Um, but uh, you know, it, it takes some money because a lot of unexpected expenses and things that come into play. This is my first bike, you know, motorized bike, and uh, so lots of things to learn, lots of things to do. My bigger motor mounts down there. Uh, where are we at? Studs, yeah, you can see them. And I tape my wires over there, keep them away from the exhaust, and uh, keep them away from everything. Um, but anyways, as people say, it's the bike life. It's a lot of fun, and this was the hardest, hardest uh, nut to put on there. Um, because of this clearance from the fuel thing. But the other ones were a little easier. But, anyways, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And Jesus bless you. Please click the links in the description of the video. Consider you to our Patreon. Go to ChristianCourts.com. Check out all our links and check out how to win in court. I make 50 bucks every time somebody signs up for the classes to how to win in court. So, or more, depending on how many people sign up. So, anyways, check all that out. Great stuff. Bye.